here in Washington, we're watching 2.15 p.m. That marks a new day of transparency for the Federal Reserve. For more, uh, we are joined right now in, here in Washington by Dean Baker. He's the co-director of the Center for Economic and Policy Research and also the former World Bank consultant. Dean, great to see you again. Thanks for having me on. And I know you're saying that for this conference, you think it's going to be key for Bernanke to talk about the economic recovery, right? That's right. I mean, the key issue is whether he's satisfied with the rate of growth or whether he thinks uh, the economy should be growing more rapidly. I mean, my own view is we should should be seeing much, much more rapid growth given the severity of the recession. But he is getting a lot of heat from conservatives, uh, from inflation hawks on the Federal Reserve Board who don't want to see a QE3 or any further stimulus. Mm -hmm. And the question is, where does he come down on that? But he's so far been pretty, um, you know, I would say optimistic or at least striking a more positive tone on the economy, though. That's right. I mean, he seems reasonably satisfied. And again, that has me concerned because, you know, we're looking at 8.8 percent .8 unemployment. There are no projections that show us getting down to a more normal rate of unemployment for at least four or five years out. So it's very hard for me to see how that optimism is justified. Well, he's talking about the economy picking up a little speed, but he's talked about the fact that unemployment is still too high and it's going to take years to get there. So what, what do you really want to see? Do you want him to say, I'm open to QE3? Absolutely. I mean, we should be seeing an economy growing 5, 6, 7 percent a year, given the severity of the downturn. That's what you had. That was the growth you had 83, 84, coming out of the 81, 82 recession. Similarly, after the mid-70s recession, you should be seeing very, very rapid growth. I mean, 3 percent growth is fine if we're sitting here with 4 and a half, 5 percent on uh, unemployment. It's mm -hmm. not fine when you have eight and a half percent. But as Ken Rogoff pointed out in his book, you don't get that kind of growth after a financial crisis recession. Well, you haven't. I mean, you know, I, I find this book very unsatisfactory because we have a long history to look at. We have a relatively short period where we've had sort of, under, I would say, a Keynesian understanding of the, econ of the economy, which basically gives us the tool to have more rapid growth. It's sort of like if we're looking at infant mortality rates and we look past all human history, well, generally, most kids die before the age of five. That doesn't happen now because we know how to keep it from happening. We know how to have the economy grow more rapidly, even after a crisis. It, right, it's a different time, is what you're saying, D uh, Dean. But, um, you know, but some critics, including Congressman Ron Paul, who we, who we had earlier on, uh, said, look, QE2 didn't even work, though. It didn't say, you know, it didn't help the economy. So what's the justification for a QE3 well, then? Well, I, I think QE2 did work. It didn't have a huge beneficial effect. I think, uh, you know, there's a range of estimates, but let's say say it added, you know, somewhere around a half point to growth. I think that's somewhere in the ballpark of most people would put it. I think you would have to be more aggressive. I mean, you could do things like targeting, you know, the, the say, two-year rate, which a number of people have advocated. Um, be more aggressive in putting more money out there. Bernanke himself, in the case of Japan, he had advocated that they target a higher rate of inflation, target 3 or 4 percent inflation. I think that's a very reasonable thing to do right now. So you don't want to hear any concerns from Bernanke about the dollar then? Uh, the lower dollar has to be part of the story. It's one of these things that just amazes me because you have the same people yelling about the budget deficit who yell about the dollar falling. Mm -hmm. Counting identity. If we have a trade deficit, we are going to have a budget deficit. There's a little connections there I can make, but that, that's the basic story. The only way we're going to get the trade deficit down is getting the dollar down. We could yell about being competitive and everything else. Nothing comes close to getting the dollar down. We want the dollar to fall, particularly those people who want to see the budget deficit down. They they may not understand that, but they should. Well, they, well, they see that the dollar is an indicator of confidence then in the U.S. economy, though, right? And that's, what, that's well, no, what's concerning. They, they, well, they should not. I mean, it's not. An, it, you know, I don't, I don't think China feels there's a lack of confidence in its economy because the yuan's low. I mean, it, the point is this is what determines our trade balance. If the dollar is 20 percent overvalued, I'm throwing that out there, but probably a ballpark number, that's the same thing as putting a 20 percent tariff on all our exports and having a 20 percent subsidy on all our imports. It's very hard to do trade in those circumstances. Okay. On that note, Dean? Good to see you again. Thank Thanks for having you. me on. Thank you for joining us. That was Dean Baker, the co-director at the Center for Economic and Policy Research.